So at the beginning of our year here at Willow Family, we did a little temperaments test. Uh, so just as part of our formation program, to help us to get to know ourselves, to help us to be able to understand ourselves or describe ourselves. Often we know we have a certain kind of a tendency, but we never put a word on it or different kind of describe it. And often having a vocabulary helps us to describe ourselves, it helps us to understand others, and understanding ourselves and understanding others uh, can make it a little easier maybe to accept ourselves and love ourselves and accept others and love them. So uh, it was very interesting because it, it reveals, I, I was a little myself and I was kind of surprised and somewhat horrified at, uh, at what I discovered. Um, but there are like, four main temperament types overall. So one is choleric, so they tend to be kind of decisive leaders, pretty much fairly sure they're always right. Uh, but they tend, but they do the, They put in the hard work to try and be right. Like they, they do the homework. Uh, they can come from perhaps somewhat dominant and um, blunt, uh, but can be quite good leaders because they do the homework, make a decision, and go for it. Great. Uh, so this is not necessarily like one of one personality is better than another. Like so it's just, these are uh, tendencies or traits that people might have. Okay. Uh, another personality type then is sanguine. They're the joyful, happy, morning people who, who are wonderful. <laughs> Life and soul party kind of people. Uh, they're you know, good company, they're always joyful, they tell the stories and have the crack and that's, that, that's them. And then there's phlegmatic, phlegmatic are kind of, ah, I'm sure, look, be grand, kind of, ah, yeah, kind of nice and calm and sure, should we have a look at that tomorrow? You know, sure. they're, they're, they're very, very, very easy company, they're very uh, light-hearted, don't take things too seriously, which again, a bit of that is grand, a lot of that can be maybe, ah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the roof's falling in, ah, sure. You get, you get another one. <laughs> so, anyway, and uh, finally, it's melancholic, so those who have a tendency to see um, the glass as half empty, uh, you know, uh, yeah. so. Okay, so most people are kind of a combination of one or two of these. But one thing I just wanted to hone in on was uh, something that came across that we came across as regards those who are of a more choleric disposition. Uh, it, said, it said one thing there which kind of probably shocked those people who have a choleric tendency. Uh, it said that they have a tendency to find weakness difficult. As in, when they see weakness in other people, it becomes kind of hard to accept. So, why can't you just do it? <laughs> you know, like this is the job, this needs to be done, you're responsible for it, get it done, why aren't you getting it done? And uh, we tend to kind of to, to have a, a difficulty accepting people's weaknesses, maybe even their own too. Okay, now, understanding ourselves isn't a justification for being that way. But it's just, it's good to be able to understand why I think the way I do, why I react the way I do. Okay, well, I'll talk for a sec. Part two, and then we're sticking together. Uh, in our reading today, uh, we come across this beautiful line. It was, it was the, 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 sorry, the psalm. <coughs> we repeated it after every verse. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. Now, often when it comes to Bible verses, we read them and they go, that's, that's fine, yeah, God's my strength, that's grand. But, but do you know what that means? Do you live that? So, I mean, if I were to say, you know, Lee there, Lee is my strength, what would that even mean? I don't really know what that would mean. I don't know. I mean, how, how would that work? Would that mean I'm just kind of inspired by him? Or it's nice to have him there as, you know, to have him backing me up, to have, to have his support. Because that, while that's nice, it's not, he's not really my strength. I mean, I still have to do all the work, you know. So saying God is my strength is quite different. Because then you see, we are asking for God to, to work within us and inspire us from within and give us a strength that's not ours. Give us something that didn't come from me. To give me something I don't have. But that's that's very different to what any of any of you or any any people can can do for others, you know. Apart from maybe like the gift of love, you know, we can give give someone love. Uh, 
if they don't have it. But what the Lord is talking about here is quite different. He's giving us something we don't have. So then, for those who are like a clerical disposition and you know, tend to be a bit rough or whatever, blunt, and a tendency to kind of have our weakness in ourselves, and maybe in others. Did I say our quotes? Uh, <laughs> Uh, well then, what can I think we're called to do, as with any weakness that we're facing, is say, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I can't love as I'm supposed to. I can't serve as I'm supposed to. I can't be the priest I'm supposed to be. I can't do anything without you. And the Lord will say, finally. Finally, you've come to that realization. You were never supposed to do it alone. You were never supposed to do any of this on your own. That's the whole point. That we, we, we learn this childlikeness. That we learn to, to, to live from the hand of God. That we learn to draw from His grace. That we learn to allow Him to transform us. That was the, the, the plan right from the beginning. That we will live from the Lord's pierced heart. So we're not supposed to do the stone. So we look at ourselves and we have our weaknesses and our tendencies and our, and our personality types and our temperaments and all that, but they we're not condemned to them. We're not stuck with them. We, we should be and we can allow the Lord to work from us, work in us from within. And if you've done the consecration to Our Lady, the uh, 30 days to morning glory uh, with uh, Father Mike Gay there. Uh, Mother Teresa, in her consecration to Our Lady, would often use this, this kind of vocabulary where she would ask Our Lady to love, allow me to love with your heart. So to love with your love, and so that I may love others, but not with a love that comes from me, but a love that comes from you, or a love that comes even through you. Through you, through me, to them. You know, so we're not drawing from our own ability, our own wisdom, our own strength. That's what allows you know, a person like Paul Maximilian Kolbe to be surrounded by such horror and death and anger and hatred to continue to love. That's not human. That's beyond human. That's not natural. That's supernatural. That's divine. That's grace. Grace working through us. And that's uh, just such an, an amazing way to live. You know, something that I hope we're all striving for things that I, I know I need to strive for more as well. That I, I live out of God's grace, everything. You know, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I feel this to some degree uh, when I have to preach every day. Because preaching every day, especially on a live stream and having them recorded and that, uh, I don't have all day to prepare a homily. I have a few other things to be getting done during the day as well. So I don't have, not, not even an hour like to sit down and actually prepare a homily. I don't, I just don't have it. So I, I have to rely on God's grace to work in and through me. Because I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. But I was never meant to. God doesn't say, like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sending you out, my, like, lamb, lamb my wolves, away you go. Run along there now. He says, and behold, I am with you always. Until the end of time. So, we're not supposed to do this alone. Parenting. Witnessing to our faith, being a missionary, being religious, we're not supposed to do it alone. And the tragic danger of doing it alone is that we can just start to veer away. And it's like a, when you're, for those of you who maybe have a somewhat shooting persuasion, um, when you're adjusting a scope, right, if you're off by half a degree, half a degree at 50 yards isn't that much. Half a degree at 200 yards, you've missed the target by that. And a half a degree at 600 yards, you haven't even landed in the same field. So, while we look at the small deviation at the beginning, if we keep continue on a road that's slightly off, by the end of your life, you find yourself working against God. And, yeah, I don't want to give an example of it, but someone came out during the week saying that, uh, yeah, he's been going his own merry way for a while, the Vatican has intervened, and kind of told him to wish up, and he said, well, now, finally, I've recognised my, uh, my beliefs. Yeah, I don't want to it. But, we see how you, you start, you de deviate off. You know, the Lord says this, but I, think I say this because it's more compassionate. And then, voila, after 10 years, you find yourself an avid pro-choice for fighting for abortion. 
in the name of compassion. So, so it's, it's very, very important that we recognize right from the beginning, we were never meant to do it alone. We were never meant to live this life as Christians alone. And so we ask the Lord to work within each one of us, to work within the church, to work within our hearts and to form us from within into other Christs, to form us into his compassionate word, into his compassionate hand, into his compassionate feet, willing to move, willing to go, willing to serve. And that each one of us can recognize that before God, we're so small, <coughs> we're so unable, but with God, we can do all things. Amen.